Hi, this is a lecture on Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Um, so Isaac Newton is probably the most important person in all of physics. Uh, he was around in the uh, 17th century, second half of the 17th century. He developed calculus, which is the math that basically governs all physics and any sort of rates of change. Um, he did a lot of work with optics, and of course he de developed classical mechanics. Uh, Newtonian mechanics and his laws of motion are the basis for modern physics and engineering. Um, today we're going to discuss another important aspect of uh, mechanics, which is his law of universal gravitation, which relates the physics of space to the physics of Earth. So it was one of the first unifications of our understanding of the universe. Um, it simplified our understanding of the universe. Instead of needing two theories, we only needed one. Um, so. The story goes, Newton was sitting outside looking at the stars under an apple tree and an apple fell on his head and he asked, if an apple falls to the earth, does, is the moon also falling? And this led to his development of the theory of gravity. Um, a theory of gravity in which all masses attract each other, so the moon actually is falling towards the earth continuously because it's being pulled continuously by the same gravitational force that pulls the apple to the earth. So let's talk about gravity. Gravity is one of the four fundamental forces of nature. The other three forces are electromagnetism, the weak force, and the strong force. But gravity is by far the weakest of all of these forces. Um, like all the other fundamental forces, it is a field force, which means the objects don't actually have to be touching for the force to be transmitted. Um, and that's because gravity is transmitted through a gravitational field. The gravitational field is produced by masses. It's invisible, but it permeates all of space. It exists everywhere, even if there's not an object to feel that gravitational force. The field is still there. And that field is what will uh, pull on things and cause them to be gravitationally pulled. Gravity is an attractive force, which means it only involves objects pulling towards each other. And it's a force between all masses in the universe. Uh, the range of gravity is infinite. It does get weaker as objects get farther apart, but it's impossible for objects to get so far apart that gravity has zero effect. It can get very small, but um, it's never going to be zero. And the greater the masses are that are uh, attracting each other, the stronger the force. So this sums up our concepts on gravity, and that'll lead us to Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation which describes the gravitational force between two objects. It says that the, the force is attractive between any two objects in the universe, gravitational force, and it's proportional to the product of the two masses and also proportional to the inverse square of the distance between the centers of mass of the objects. We can sum that up in an equation. This is our law of universal gravitation. Force of gravity is some constant big G times big M times little m divided by r squared, where r, let's write this as little r, r is the distance between the centers of the mass, and big M and little m are the masses themselves. Big G is just a constant of proportionality to make the units work out correctly. It's different depending on what unit system we choose. In SI units, big G is a universal constant. It's 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. So make sure you have that constant written down so you can refer back to it. Uh, one thing to note about this equation is it treats uh, gravitational sources as point masses. So we're actually finding the gravitational attraction between point masses, a distance r apart, that have masses little m and big M. But um, there's a mathematical theorem that says that if you have a spherically symmetric object, the gravitational force is going to be the same as a point mass with the same amount of mass um, all concentrated at the center. So this is why when we're using this equation, the r is going to be the distance between the centers of the objects, the centers of mass. And that's true for spherically symmetric objects. Treat them like point masses with all the masses at the center we get an accurate value uh, for the gravitational force. So let's do 
some a thought experiment. Two asteroids in space are gravitationally attracted to each other with a force of 10 to the 6 newtons. What is the gravitational force if the distance between them is doubled, tripled, and cut in half? Well, let's look at our equation for gravitational force. Force of gravity is G m1 m2 over r squared. Big M and little m can be either mass, they're just different masses. Well, we're not changing G, that's constant. We're not changing the two masses, we're just looking at the distance squared. So, we could say that force of gravity is proportional to 1 over r squared which means it's an inverse square law. So if we double the distance, the force is going to go up by 1 over that doubling squared. So the force is going to be times 1 over 2 squared, or the force is going to be multiplied by 1 over 4. So that means it would be 0.25 times 10 to the 6, or 2.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons. If we triple the distance, our force is going to be multiplied by 1 over 3 squared. It's going to get smaller by a factor of 3 squared, because it's an inverse square law. Um, so it's going to be multiplied by 1 over 9. So 10 to the 6 divided by 9 is about 1.11 times 10 to the 5 newtons. If we cut the distances in half, that means we're bringing our asteroids closer together. The force is going to increase. Um, and since we're decreasing the distance by a factor of 2, we would increase the force by a factor of 2 squared. You can also look at the proportional reasoning equation up here. Force is going to be 1 over 0 0.5 squared, because we cut that distance in half. 1 over point, sorry, it changes by that much. 1 over 0.5 squared is 1 over 0 0.25, which is the same as 4, which means our force is going to be 4 times as big. Our force will be 4 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Cut the distance in half, we get 4 times the force. If one of the asteroids triples in mass, well, again, let's look at our equation. Force of gravity is gmm over r squared. I'll just isolate this. So that means our force of gravity is proportional to little m. It's also proportional to big M. So if we increase 1, the force is going to increase by the same amount. So if we triple the mass of 1, we're going to get 3 times 10 to the 6 newtons worth of force. If we cut one of the masses in half, we're going to get 0 0.5 times 10 to the 6 newtons worth of force. Um, or 5 times 10 to the 5 newtons. Half. Uh, last of all, we could say what happens if both the asteroids double in mass and the distance doubles. So that means we're changing everything other than big G. So we could say that the force is proportional to m little m over r squared. And we could just plug in what things are multiplied by. Big M is multiplied by 2. Little m is multiplied by 2. r is multiplied by 2, but it's 2 squared. So we get 2 times 2 over 2 squared equals 1, which means the force doesn't change. Which means force is still equal to 10 to the 6 newtons. Let's do a problem that involves some more numbers. The moon is 384 million meters from Earth. The Earth is 150 billion meters from the sun. What is the net gravitational force on the Earth? due to these two bodies. Assume Earth is exactly between the Moon and the Sun. So we're trying to find the net force on the Earth, and we can see that there are two other objects that are going to be pulling on it. There's going to be a gravitational force from the Sun, I'm going to label Fs, it points to the left, and a gravitational force from the Moon, I'm going to call Fm, it points to the right. Since force is a vector, we can just solve for each of these forces individually, and then find the net force. So if we want to find the force from the sun on the earth, that's going to be G m of, uh, let's say m of sun, mass of earth, over the distance between the sun and earth squared, just from our equation. Um, 
So let's let's just plug in our numbers. Big G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. I'm going to emit units. Um, mass of sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. As long as I'm in base SI, my units should cancel correctly. Mass of the earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms divided by the distance between the sun and the earth uh, squared. Distance between the sun and the earth is 150 billion meters. So that's 150 times 10 to the 9 meters and that whole thing squared. This I just plug into a calculator. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 1.99 times 10 to the 30 times 5.97 times 10 to the 24 divided by, and i got to put my whole denominator in parentheses, 150 times 10 to the 9 squared. The force from the sun is 3.52 times 10 to the 22 newtons. And the direction in my diagram is left, so I'm going to write left here just to keep track. we got to do the same thing to find the force from the moon. It's going to be g times the mass of the moon times the mass of the earth over the distance between the moon and the earth squared. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the moon. 7.35 times 10 to the 22 times the mass of the earth. 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms divided by the distance between them which is 384 million meters, so 384 times 10 to the 6 meters, and that whole thing squared. Plug that into a calculator, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 7.35 times 10 to the 22 times 5.97 times 10 to the 24 divided by my whole distance squared, 384 times 10 to the 6, that whole thing squared, I get 1.98 times 10 to the 20 newtons to the right. To find the net force, it's just the vector sum of the forces, so that's going to be 3.52 times 10 to the 22. I'm going to say left is positive, so let's just do positive, negative, because that's a bigger one. Anyways. So minus 1.98 times 10 to the 20 newtons. It's, it's negative because it points to the right. My net force is 3.50 is just 3.50 times 10 to the 22 newtons. It's the net force on the Earth at that moment. Notice that the force from the moon is only about one one hundredth of the force from the sun. So the sun's gravitational pull is much, much, much stronger. It's much, much stronger than the force from the moon. Let's do one more question. How far apart would two electrons have to be for the gravitational force between them to be one newton? The mass of an electron is 9.31 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So we're going to use our gravitation equation. Force of gravity is g m1 m2 over r squared. And we want to find how far apart they would be. We know that we have two electrons, so this is going to be the mass 1 and mass 2. And we know the force right here. So we're just going to solve for R. Uh, just solve for R. So let's isolate R. First, I'm going to get R in the numerator by multiplying both sides by R squared. R squared cancels. We get R squared force equals G. M, M. Divide both sides by force. I get R squared equals G, M, M over F. And take the square root of both sides. I get R equals the square root of G, M, M over F. But since our masses are the same, I can just both write, write them both as the mass of the electron. So it's going to be the square root of G times the mass of the electron squared over F. Plug in my numbers. R is the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 9.31 times 10 to the minus 31, that whole mass squared, 
over 1.00 newtons. R then becomes, plug it into a calculator, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 9.31 one times 10 to the minus 31, that whole thing squared, divided by 1, take the square root. Whew, our distance is very small, 7.60 times 10 to the minus 36 meters. Now this is much, much smaller than any distance we could actually ever probe. A nucleus is about 10 to the minus 15 meters. Um, and so this is many, 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 many orders of magnitude smaller than a nucleus. We're not going to be able to be able to get this strong of a force on electrons just because they don't have enough mass. We can't get them that close. They don't have enough mass. In summary, the gravitational force is universal. It's an attractive force between all masses in the universe, hence universal. It is an inverse square law, which means if you double the distance, force goes down by distance squared. And this is our equation for the gravitational force between any two objects. Force of gravity is g m m over r squared. That's all. Bye.